Welcome, everyone! This is another episode of Voicing Artists Original Characters. Now, I am very excited for this episode for two reasons. The first is that we have a featured voice actor on here. We have our lovely friend, Shaq. Shaq, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hello there. My name is Jacurion, quote, Shaq Stewart. Shaq is what I'm known in the voice acting world. I'm a Southern voice actor rated by Upwork as the top 20 best new Alabamian actor voice actors of the year of last year just someone who is very passionate about our voice acting field and i'm doing all that i can to bring some wonderful characters to life awesome cool so the other reason that i'm excited today is because the characters we are working with in this video are in the same universe dun, dun! <laughs> Super exciting. Yes, it is the first time this has happened in a series. They are two separate characters, but the artist who created them are in a D&D &D campaign where both of these characters exist. I'm very excited. So we will start with the one I'm going to voice. The character's name is Cassiopeia Beetlejuice. We're going to call her Cass for the rest of this uh -huh. episode. <laughs> And the artist's name is Yaz, a pronoun she, her. So the artist gave me some information and background and history to Cass here. And I'm going to let y'all know what the artist has given me. So Cass is a young 20-year-old and she was stuck all her life in her home. She wasn't allowed to go outside. Now, one day... Her family just randomly lets her outside because she needs to go do work for the family, but they don't tell her why that she's all of a sudden allowed to be out. And about a year from that time, she meet a bunch of strangers in her D&D campaign and the adventure begins. So while she is out there with this group, she is searching for information about her great-grandfather who went missing, and his decisions were the reason that she was told she couldn't go outside. Now, she doesn't know what decisions he made or what happened. That is part of the D&D campaign. But for some details about her in general, she is a Circle of Stars druid, so she is the healer of the party. She's got a special connection with nature, grants her powers, especially with the sky, and she's in charge of the party's well-being, so she likes to give flowers to people. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yes. So the extra little tidbit of information here is that she has a little bird called Hero and she loves to summon star made wolves, which is badass as hell. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> she might be a healer, but she's pretty dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not just wolves, but they're star made as well. Right? My goodness. So some personality traits that the artist also gave to me. They said that Cass was curious dreamy, loves nature, loves animals, hence the druid. Very hasty, a little out of touch because they've been locked away for so mm -hmm. long. Not super great with crowds for the same reason. Mm -hmm. A little impulsive, but also very diplomatic and respectful due to the way that she was raised. So the word that I really like out of this group of adjectives that the artist gave me is the word dreamy. I really, really like this adjective in describing Cass because besides the fact that she is in tune with the stars and in touch with all those things, I think when you are sort of locked away and hidden from the world for so long, you create this universe that you believe to be real mm -hmm. or that you want to be real mm -hmm. and that you desperately want to experience. Right. So I love the idea that she's sort of like, always in this state of oh one day i'll see the people and do the things and blah 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 and i think it gives her like a whimsy about her it gives her a reason for us to root for her because we want her to have all of these things yeah so i like that adjective yeah yeah so there's a bunch of drawings for Cass, which is super awesome. I love when we have so much artwork in different poses and themes to work oh, with. Gotta love the artwork. Right? So these will be scrolling through as I go through them here for a bit. But I'm going to note some of the adjectives and personality traits and things that I pick up from these drawings. Mm -hmm. I pick up some things like regal... She seems very diplomatic, like how we mentioned from the artist. I also think that she would be very honest and open, especially when you're meeting new people and you have no experience in social situations. You tend to be a bit more like open with how you feel and what you want to say. 
She also comes across as a little innocent, very charismatic, kind, gentle. I think there's lots of wonder and joy in these images. Mm. So many of them show like, the stars and the sky and yeah. lots of magic. Yeah, and it's very beautiful. It gives this sense of like there's so much to the world that we don't understand and that we can get into connection with. And I love that for her. I also think she's very playful. I think that she would be very in touch with her emotions. Yeah. Druids and people that are in connection with nature tend to be very in touch with their emotions. She might wear her heart on her sleeve, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I especially really like the word delicate. I think delicate is an interesting one here because both physically and mentally, I think she would be a little more delicate than maybe other members in her group. Not to say that she's weak or that she can't defend herself by any means. She definitely can. But I think because... She's not used to the harsh realities of people and of nature because she's in tune with nature. But people are a lot more cruel than mm. nature could ever be. Yeah. So I think her personality would be very delicate in that she's so open with people and she wants to engage and be caring and be kind and be gentle so that if somebody meets that kindness and that gentleness with harshness or with sarcasm or with hate or any sort of negative reaction, she's very much like, oh, like punctured by it and wounded by it. And she might have a little tiny bit of a bite to give back, <laughs> a little bit of back and yeah. forth. I think we'll find out with both of our yeah. characters today. <laughs> she sounds like a term that I would use, a controlled monster. Like she's Ooh. capable of, uh, or controlled angel, because she is a druid and healer. But uh, I say controlled monster because she's capable of doing what's best by her design of doing destruction or maybe even healing. But she's not willing to fight because she is controlled unless she is in danger. So she sounds, her design is very much true to herself. And the adjective they use to describe her, uh, the drawings is like delicate. And I think that was, you gave a wonderful description of it because she's delicate, not because she's weak, but she's delicate because that is who she is and that's who she wants to be. And that's the brilliance that's being drawn through the artwork for Cass. Yes, I agree with you fully. Is there any other like adjectives or things you would say about some of this artwork? Yeah. So with Kaz, when you were talking about dreamy and out of touch, a word that I could describe about this artwork and as well as Kaz character herself is that she's very juxtaposed. Ooh. She is constantly in a juxtaposition of dreamy, out of touch, good, healing, healing, destruction, destruction, evil. She reminds me of a constant balance of the yin yin yang. It's two opposite things where they collide together just naturally. So an example of this would be a neutron star collision. A neutron star is a black hole, a type of black hole. And when they collide together, they just do so much destruction to the space, but they stay closely together and they never leave each other's sight. They can't be separated. And Kaz, to me, and portrayed by her artwork, portrayed by the adjectives you describe, this juxtaposition is a beautiful way to describe a neutron star collision into a human embodiment. And I will also say her motivations for being delicate, as well as the positive adjectives such as being kind, happy. She became who she was today because she inherits the powers that she have related to her true self. And that's how she becomes more powerful or that term I used before, controlled monster, because she's true to herself. Lots of potential there where she will eventually see more of the compare and contrast to nature. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's beautiful things to bring in. I love the idea of the juxtaposition of her choosing to be this kind, gentle, beautiful soul when she also has these creation and crazy star powers and can clearly like be the other side. She could be the villain. She could be the enemy, but she, she isn't. 
And I love, love, love that about her. And some of this artwork, I love the one where she's looking at her hand, which is encompassed in like the constellation. There's like fear on her face. There's genuine like, what is happening to me? I really, really love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work and create a neutral line here for Cass. And we'll see if we can take all of these adjectives and things that we've been running with and create a cool line. So let's do it. The world is so beautiful. It's much better than I could have ever imagined. I hope I'll find people that are also this kind and loving and beautiful. (sighs) Just like my dreams. Yeah, I'm kind of with that vibe for her. I like the idea that her neutral state is more of a happy tone. You know, Mm -hmm. because it kind of goes with her energy and her positivity. And we brought in a little bit of the naivete where she's like, yes, everyone is going to be happy and Mm -hmm. good. (laughs) Yeah. What did you think? I think that was just brilliant in terms of how she would actually be described in terms of her voice. Like we mentioned earlier, being true to herself and being comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And it just sounds right on the money. You know, I like who I am. The stars have chosen me to have these power and I can heal people with them. And there's that whimsical adjective that we used earlier where she sounds very carefree, very wanting to see more of what's out there. It was just absolutely wonderful. Awesome. Cool. So then I'm going to move on to emotions here. Okay. So we have our happy, angry, sad as per usual. And we're going to start with happy. So I think Cass would be incredibly happy if she was with her team members and all of her team members were having a good group engagement where they were all just laughing and getting along and being able to relax almost like one of those campfire Mm -hmm. moments where everyone's sitting around the campfire and you're all just smiling and playing games and laughing and doing jokes and you really care and love for everyone i think that's a good context idea for this so i'm gonna run with that for happy okay and let's see if we can pull in some more of the positive adjectives that we were talking about i'm so grateful that i was able to join all of you you know I wasn't really sure what to expect, and the world has definitely been different from what I thought it would be, but every single one of you just makes me smile, and I hope that we can stay this way forever. Awesome! I love doing joy. I love getting to do the joy and the happy with characters that are just naturally positive. (laughs) Oh, so freeing. (laughs) So freeing. Oh my goodness. What do you think? Did that work for Cass? Yeah, absolutely. And as a supporter, in terms of video games or RPG role-playing games or Dungeons & Dragons, it's very true to herself to be the one to uplift everyone's spirit, but also is uplifting herself because she's surrounded by people who's allowing her to support them. This party that I'm in and my team members, they're just vibing. Like, they're so nice. They're just awesome. And, like, I would feel nothing but joy and happiness if I was cast. So that was beautifully delivered. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So let's move on to our angry. Mm. I think angry is going to be interesting for Cass, especially because a lot of positive characters tend to do anger very differently because it's hard to get them in a state where they're genuinely mad because they're always so optimistic and they're always so genuine with how they feel. But I think that genuine aspect of how Cass feels in particular is going to help with doing the angry one because it's going to allow the anger and whatever goes with it to be felt more passionately Mm -hmm. than some other characters. Right. So what kind of situation would make Cass angry? Her values is what got her so far in adventure in the first place. As a druid that she is, your job is to heal people. I would definitely think what would make Cass just a more upset than her baseline if someone is doing the opposite. You know, we're on a journey in the first place as we team members to build a role and help people as best we can. The antagonist would be something that does not align at all with Cass' viewpoint. So I definitely think that would make her angry, as well as because she cares tremendous about her party. So if anyone hurts their party, you know, I imagine Cass would just be like, okay, scratches on me. Okay, all right. I'm a little upset. 
you hurt any of my friends, okay, it's time nope. for me to unleash <laughs> everything I got, max damage, max intellect. I definitely would believe that would be Cass's tipping point if you hurt her friend. Yeah, I agree fully. And I think that's what I'm going to run with is let's say that for this angry line, they are in some sort of a battle or maybe she was even trying to avoid the battle by being like, I don't want to fight you, whatever the case may yeah. be. And this antagonist has just completely attacked. She's doing a lot of damage to the party. They're against their values. And that's what I think I'm going to go with. So let me give that a shot. Stop! Why are you doing this? All we want to do is help people and you're out here acting like a fool. I won't let you hurt anyone in this party. It is my job to care for them. You take one more step and you won't be able to take any more. Oh, that was <laughs> wonderful. I love that. Anger is the most fun one to do. I got yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I have any words. That was a really fun one to feel. It's like Cass. We said nothing but positive things about her character and herself. But and just like people in real life, we have these wonderful people who are just genuine. And when they snap, you get that angry part and everything is just like, uh, uh, what? what who? What do we do? You can hear the tiny needle drop on the ground because when those type of people get angry, it's a lot of powerful emotion. That line is definitely to describe that situation. And if I was Cassius' antagonist, I would be running the other way. <laughs> well, cool. Then I think we can move on to sad. If what makes her angry is that someone's coming against them and trying to hurt her party and all these things... I think her sadness would then come from if they actually did lose, if someone from the party actually did get harmed or hurt or was going to die or something of that nature. What do you think? That works? Yeah, I think that absolutely works, especially if like she's like trying her best. Say like she did all this effort, all these emotions. Someone got hurt, like you said, and it kind of transitions to sadness because like, huh? What am I thinking? Was it my fault? Did I not try hard enough and not strong enough? Should I leave this journey? Yeah, I think that is an excellent point you have. Okay, well then that's what we're gonna run with. So let's get into sad here. I'm sorry. I I tried. I just there's nothing more we can do. There's nothing more I can do. Oh, that yeah. one hits hard. She sounds so <laughs> defeated. Yes, that's a good adjective. It's like sadness, but it's also defeated. I talk a lot in this series about combining different words with those pure emotions and i think in the angry there was a bit of a protector a bit of a caregiver added to the anger versus hate and i think with this sad defeated is such a good word that was in there defeated i think also like grief i think maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of what you were talking about where it's like she puts a little blame on herself as well i think all of that was in there Okay, so that is me playing around with Cass. We're going to move on to your character for today. And why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, so now we'll transition to Eflin. Eflin was created by an artist named Des. Give you a little bit about his summary and how he relates to the universe that we're in and as well as his history. So he is a Triton, but he actually uses transformative magic, or I describe it as camouflage magic, to make himself appear as half-orc. Now, in this universe, Tritons are technically supposed to be extinct. But he's actually not. And he's actually possibly one of the endangered species of in this current timeline. In terms of his background of his home life or his upbringing, his family himself wasn't very close. His father abandoned him and as well as their family themselves. So that's already a tough life. When he grew up, he tried his best to draw attention to himself by doing very stupid things. Definitely was that kid from high school we always know that's not really maturing very well and they're kind of pranking the teachers <laughs> like it's like some old cheesy 90s Disney cartoon. That's Eflin for you. Now we get to the present now where he gets connected to Cass and other team members on a journey where he one day found a sword that promised him power. 
And he accepted this power because he only wanted to live a good life. So when he got back to his family with this wonky sword, you know, just this nonchalant everyday demon sword, they exiled him and his own sister tried to kill him. In which, you know, you got dad who's left the family and now my sister is trying to kill me. And it's just very bad news for Eflin. So a little bit about his personality himself. Um, he acts tough. It's not that he is tough. It's more like he acts tough. He's putting on a front. He's an actor on stage and it's questionable. Is he still the director or is somebody else the director themselves who's making him acting tough? But that's the interesting part about Eflin so far. He also acts, and that's another keyword, he acts like he doesn't care about other people. Even when he cares so deeply about people that he gets so scared to lose them. Like an actor on stage, we can try to act tough all we want, but when our heart and passion is laid in front of us or is about to be taken away from us, how long can we portray this acting role when our true self comes out from our body? So he tries his best not to get too attached. And he acts just thinking about what's better for his friends, for his party. And he's pretty much gung-ho in which he's willing to do anything if he means that people he care about, like his friends, will be okay. So overall, he's a tough guy with a golden heart that he just really tries hard to hide. Another trait is that he's mean. I would imagine he would be mean because that's how he thinks he must be. And I will also describe him as selfish, but it's also not his intention. He's selfish in terms of like trying to hold on to his act. Rachel, how do you feel about Eflin's personality traits? Do you think anything sticks out? What would you add? Yeah, I think you're spot on with Eflin. A lot of those were given to us by the artist, and it's always interesting to see how the artist describes their character and their viewpoint of them. I think it gives us a good insight into the way that they have originally envisioned them. It gives us a good place to take that character from and mold them and adapt them and give them life and personality. So I really like everything you've said so far, and I'm excited to see what you say about the drawings that the artist gave us. I really love the sword that is in the artwork here, and you guys will see the sword and the same pattern onto the hand of Ethlyn as well. And I love that Ethlyn sort of gives me like edgy bad boy vibes, or at least that's what he wants to project, right? That's right. He's a lot cleaner and smoother and almost more regal than a bad boy usually is at least in his design yeah but he wants to be edgy and he wants to be cold and he wants to like have people not mess with him like he's a badass so i really like that why don't you give us some adjectives and such and a quick summary of what you get from these drawings yeah so with the drawing itself with the one he's carrying the demon sword and a little bit about the one where he's showing like his corrupted hand. One thing I noticed from both of these pictures is that he's left-handed. And so he's dominant with his left hand. I love what you said, Rachel, about like he tries so hard. I'm like punk rock. I listen to My Chemical Romance. <laughs> you guys don't understand me. But you look at his design with him carrying the sword. What sticks out to me is that he's wearing light armor. He's slender. He looks comfortable and he has a satchel. Everything is like quick mobility. But you take away all of that armor, then you probably will see, and based on design, particularly the one where it's like his portrait and he's like staring into our soul. Uh, <laughs> he is kind of just having his undergarments, but he still doesn't look like the muscular figure that he's trying to portray. You take away the armor off, and he is more like his true self. Yeah, it's almost like a metaphor. You take the armor that he shields himself with personality-wise, too, trying to be the bad boy. Take that armor away and you get the true character underneath. That's right, yeah. It's that question that I imagine Eflin would have. It's like, what is the real me? Other adjectives that I get from this drawing is like, maybe lost, determined, I would say judgmental and secretive but durable like i do think though he's trying hard i think he's still based on his sign that he can definitely hold his own in a fight but he still shouldn't be underestimated i like that i think those are really good descriptors and we are going to run into your neutral line i'm gonna let you just 
play with it, and let's see what you get for your neutral line. So go right ahead. My old life is behind me. With this sword, I will cut down anyone who stands in my way. Yeah, and that's a neutral line for Eflin. So I kind of use like his baseline to be very smooth, very calm, like a calm passive aggressiveness, but he's not necessarily angry, but he's like, okay, if you try me, I'm ready whenever, <laughs> you know. I really like how you did the neutral line, how Cass's had more of that happy, gentle positivity that is her natural state. Ethlyn's had that bad boy, distinguished, I can kick your ass if I want to energy. Yeah. Which is really good for his neutral state. So awesome job. That was really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we should move on to happy for Ethlyn. What do you think would make Ethlyn incredibly happy? There's a low likeness you will show his happiness to other people when he's by himself or when he's doing a lament by himself. I imagine he will express out loud his happiness. Like, I'm so glad my friends are okay. Like, he just got through a tough situation with an antagonist. It's like, oh, thank God they're okay. Oh, oh I, was, I thought I was going to lose Cass. I thought I was going to lose everybody. But then in front of them, it's like, yeah, all right, whatever. You die, you die. <laughs> you know, it'll still be a all Tuesday. Right. Yeah. So that's how I describe happiness. Well, cool. Then go ahead and play with that. <laughs> we actually did it. Everyone's okay. We're gonna be okay. Yeah, so that's how I would describe happiness from Eflin. Still kind of having the tone baseline, but his dialogue and him not necessarily being experienced with happiness, he wouldn't know how to outwardly express it, like more exasperated. So in my view, it's like he would be more reserved in his happiness, but still tries to be moody because he's been playing the character moody for so long. You'll see in his happiness as well. Yeah, absolutely. I agree fully. I like the idea that when he's in this happy state, it's almost like a relief and his happiness is like a weight off of his shoulders because he doesn't get to experience all the time since he has this image that he puts out where he's just always moody yeah. and always the bad boy and the you can't touch me. So I like it as a relief. Well, then let's go into angry. What do we think would make Ethlyn super angry? My thought process with Ethlyn and anger is that he would feel it very intensely. So I think regardless of what the situation is, he's going to be like really loud. Mm. I think he's going to be really sort of abrasive with it. He seems like the type of person that when he gets deeply angry, he's like, don't even try it. I'm going to beat you type of energy. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely think it's the same. In terms of what I would add is that what would make him angry is possibly when you attack his insecurities. Ooh. Because he has that slender figure. He tries to use his armor to cover up not just physically, but his emotions. And so if you try to attack that or you hurt his friends, I think he would definitely be pissed off. I definitely think he's going to be loud in like he would not be as reserved as he is in baseline. Yeah, awesome. So give us an angry. You don't stand a chance. You want to see real power? Then let me show you. That's Eflin angry. That was awesome. Yeah. There was so much like power and passion and pure rage. And I think it really embodied what we tend to think of when we think of anger, which is like hatred and in the moment feeling because a lot of characters don't necessarily feel that pure hate, but that was a good like rageful yell and scream and hate and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I also know it would be uncontrollable for Eflin. Like he would just be like, uh, uh, uh. I want to experience this emotion, but not this way. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. So that means we're on our last emotion here. So we're into sad. So something that would make Eflin super like genuinely upset and sad what do you think that would be he has a tough guy act but he's still pretty tough just not as tough as try makes him out to be but i still think he'll be tough enough of not being sad over people's words i think what would make him actually sad we go back to Cass, where her values are questioned she may be angry well i think with eflin 
if his values are questioned, which is protecting his friends, people on the journey, people that he just want them to be okay. Where if Cassie was angry because they had the same value, with Eflin, he would be sad because Eflin has definitely no experience that much sadness. But if he did, it would be true to what his childhood was when his dad left and his sister tried to kill him. It would be just like that all over again if one of his people from his party is hurt or they abandon him. Okay, so run with that for sad, and I am excited to see what you do. It can't, can't end this way. They're gone. They're, they're all gone. They, they, I, I tried so hard to prevent this, but it's all my fault. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that's definitely sad. <laughs> yes, the emotions are always so fun. Got some tears in my eyes. Right? The emotions are always so fun because you yeah. come out of them and you're like, okay, I'm back to an okay person now. <laughs> yeah, it's theater all right? over again. <laughs> well, that was beautiful. Your sadness for Ethlyn was very, very pure. And I think that works perfectly for a character that puts on these blocks and a character that puts on another like hardness and cold. Oldness, I think when they experience something like sadness and it's so pure that it really hits them hard and hits them emotionally at their heart. And I love how it was very much based in the idea that he has lost someone else, almost like someone else abandoning him again. I think that was very good for you to put in there and really gave it a sense not just of sadness, but almost of entire despair, like nothing matters anymore. That was really cool. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So to end out our session here, since these folks are in the same universe, we have a few drawings that were given to us of both Cass and Ethlyn together. And so we're going to run off of these drawings and we're going to do some dialogue with each other. So little information about this that we were given. Cass and Ethlyn, especially from the drawings, as you can see, do eventually end up in a romantic nature. But at the moment where they are in the D&D campaign and where they are in the storyline, they are very much more like an enemies to lover thing. So at the moment, they're friends and they work together, but they hate each other's guts. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> which honestly makes sense because Ethlyn's front, Ethlyn's fakeness of being cold and having no emotions and not caring, if Cass doesn't understand that it's him protecting himself, I think she would be really frustrated at the fact that he won't let her in and he won't let her see her true self. Yeah, and another thing could be that, you know, Cass is her pureness in that she may be able to see this facade and maybe she'll be frustrated as well that he's not willing to break this facade and he's still being a jerk. Because Cass would be more in tune with herself to learn how to be herself, but not good old bad boy Eflin, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So I think we should do, as our dialogue with these characters, we should do a moment where they're having some sort of a disagreement and they're just very much like spitting at each other, where Eflin is very used to sort of this angry, sort of this spiteful conversation. Cass, of course, won't be, so yeah. her insults are going to be a little less accomplished but i think that'll make it really fun between the two so i will start it off what do we think they could be arguing about hmm let's say they just got from a battle they were ambushed and they already defeated like the bad guys they're like running away but there's one guy left like one bad guy but Eflin is probably like, oh, yeah, we got to execute this. Like, he's going to tell other people, and he hurt you, Cass, and he hurt the group members, and we up going to wipe him out. Eflin thinks he's doing what's best for the group, but he's also helping his personality. And Cass would just be like, yo, bro, what? why did he do that? He was already defenseless. We could have leave him. I like that idea. Let's play with it as if the guy is still alive and the group is trying to decide Ooh. what to do with him. Yeah. So that way we can bring a bit more levity to the situation and we can make it a bit more playful since we've been so serious with these other emotions. 
let's see if we can run with the idea of Cass is very much on the we can let him go side. The battle is done. And Ethlyn is very much like, a, nah, we yeah. can kill this man. Yeah, it's on site. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'll start us off and we'll go a little bit back and forth. Okay, awesome. Well, I vote that we should let him go. After all, the battle is won. And look at him. Do we really need to take a life just because? Okay, Cass. I understand what you're coming from. <laughs> no, I don't. But the scars on your face say otherwise. He could have plunged you right in the heart with his spear. And yet yours wanted to spare him? <laughs> As if. My demon sword is hungry anyway. Listen, Ethlyn, I understand that you don't like to leave loose ends. <laughs> All I'm saying is that for once, I think we should be listening to our principles and our morals and our heart. Cass, can't you hear me? I am listening to my morals and my heart. And my morals is telling me to go onto the path of wiping this guy out. And though it may be evil, it is a natural evil for the better good. Oh. For our safety, for your safety, for my safety. We need to execute them. Ugh. Don't you all agree? Oh my goodness. For two seconds, can you please think like a normal human being instead of with this crazy, I want to kill everybody mind. Not everyone is like that. <laughs> well, not everybody. It's like all peaches and rainbows and your dumb bird over there who's just wanting to have- I am not peaches and rainbows. Who just wants to just frolic around in nature and like- do everyone know? Do not insult my buddy! Okay, okay. Let's talk about just me and you. You act like I'm like hiding this persona, just wanting to do something in a different way, like your way. Well, life doesn't work like that, Cass. If you don't want to see me die, or other people die, or yourself die, or your family die, then you need to make sacrifices on other people's lives. Oh, you just don't listen to anything I have to say. Can't you for once I am listen to a listening, single word? Just responding oh. back to it. You're just not listening. No! You're just not liking what I'm saying. I am listening quite well, and I am telling you my heart. It's not always what oh, you're talking about God. when we're at camp. To listen to my heart. Here we go again. And my heart is telling heart me. Is telling it's you. My heart is telling oh, me God. to execute him Esalen. because he is a oh, danger to us. Yes, beautiful. That was great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the roaring crescendo of intensity right? we both Yes. Did. Awesome. That was beautiful. That was so much fun to get to play yeah. with those characters, especially together. I love that we got like a little insult argument fest. That was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> So cool. Thank you for being with me in this episode here today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So everyone watching, don't forget, first and foremost, go and follow the artists that were featured today in this video, both Yaz and Des. Please go follow them. They have incredible characters and we're so lucky to be able to get to work with this. Yes. And besides those things, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can go follow Shaq, of course, on all of his platforms. Yay. And hopefully in the future, you will tune in to more episodes of this series. But for now, all I have to say is goodbye. Goodbye.